Game 2 of Euro 2024 and Switzerland have beaten Hungary 3-1. This game was quite entertaining, really, really dope game. Um, interesting thing is that Hungary and Switzerland, both of them have many players who play in Germany. So like all these players either know each other, have played against each other, they know how they play basically. Um, I was quite impressed with how Switzerland started. The first 15 minutes of the game, they were just on a different level. Like... The one thing about Switzerland is that we always know them to be compact, um, very hard to beat, but also they find it very difficult to break down opposition. But in this game, they were quite... Like, the movement up front, the movement of that... Um, up, the only people who I can say were stayed in their position. Soma, obviously, goalkeeper, Akanji and Shah. Everyone else, and Dua, who was sort of maintaining the middle area, the striker, everyone else was moving. The movement in between was insane. Vargas was a left winger. You'd find him on the right. Ebisha said at right back, he'd come and cover for Ricardo Rodriguez at left back. Speaking of Ricardo Rodriguez, this is insane. Like how long this guy, how consistently he has played for the national team. He has now played, he has only missed six minutes in the last two Euros and three World Cups for Switzerland combined. He's only missed a total of six minutes. Like he's just insane. He's getting up there in age. And when he started at left back, I also thought that this is that would be a place where Hungary would uh, really exploit that ball over the top and put Shal Shaloy on that side because Shaloy was was really good. The number twenty for Hungary, he was really good. He sort of got behind him. He had a shot, and then he got behind him once. And after that point, he wasn't really exploited because what Switzerland did is that Ricardo Rodriguez, who ideally is your left back. On paper, they told us it's going to, they're going to play with a back three. When they started playing, it was a back four. But the moment they had the ball, Ricardo Rodriguez was everywhere. He was play, he, at moments, very very rarely you'd see him at left wing, but then he'd spend a lot of time in midfield, right? The inf uh, like inverted fullbacks. But then he wouldn't just stay on the left side of midfield. He'd go to the right side of midfield because they know Xhaka, who is very good at coming to play at left back, would come and rotate. Like the rotation between them was insane. Ebisha, who is actually their right winger, was playing left wing back at times and actually dropping back and covering whenever Ricardo Rodriguez or Xhaka were not at left back. So, was not at left back. So, the movement between the, like, the entire team, like, Vargas, Abisha, Xhaka, uh, Froila was more or less in the middle. So, like, he didn't move much and Vidma was more or less in the middle. Xhaka, Abisha, Dua, Ndoye, Rodriguez, those guys were everywhere, everywhere. And then speaking of Dua, Quadua Dua, the man with a Ghanaian name, it's just interesting. Every time Scotland, uh, sorry, Switzerland come to this tournament, they come with some big black striker. Last year, they introduced Mbolo to us. Um, they're always introducing big black people to us. Akanji came, in, like, I think three, two or three tournaments ago. So they keep finding these people. And the one, the one thing that Switzerland has always had is an issue at striker. Like, they've one contributor why they don't break teams down as easily is that they don't have a striker who can do a lot of things, right? Because... The way they play, it requires a striker who can offer much more than just be a hold up, hold up nine. Someone who can drop, someone who has pace, physical, and can actually run behind uh, the other team to stretch them. They normally have, like when they had Fry, when they had um, uh, yeah, Sebastian Fry mostly because he was there for a long time. Yes, he was big, physical, good in the air, but he could never go, he could never run uh, behind the defense. So at any one time, that's the one threat you don't have, you know. But now with their mobility, Having wingers like those and having someone like Dua, the amount of pace is frightening up front. And you saw it in how they scored the first goal, right? For me, Ebisha was man of the match. Jack has, been, has just been named man of the match, but Ebisha was everywhere. Like, this boy was just picking up spaces in the middle of the park and just really, really destroying Hungary. Um, it was Akanji's pass into him in the middle of the park where he then passed it to... Um, Akanji passed it to Ebisha, and then Ebisha just quick, quick, quick thinking into Dua's path. Then Dua went down and scored, uh, but the assistant ref said it was an offside. When they went to VR, they found that, I think it was either Kekes, it was one of the guys on that side. It was Sol Salai or Kekes, Salai from Hungary, um, who was putting him on side, and the goal was given. Um, at this point, Switzerland were just in complete control. Hungary were just, they were not at it uh, the first few minutes of the game. Um, yeah, yeah, um, Again, Dua, big black man being brought on from Ghana. The world is just... The, it shows you how cosmopolitan the world is becoming, right? Like, they even had an Okafor on the bench. Like, a team, Switzerland, having Ghanaian and Nigerian people on the bench. That is insane. Um, yeah, Ricardo Rodriguez, as I've said, was everywhere. Was everywhere. Jacques was controlling the tempo mad in the first half. 
Hungary could not get um, anywhere close to him. And if Hungary were to get into this game, they had to nullify him. But just before halftime, Ebisha gets the ball in the middle of the park. He was always wanting to come back to his right foot. When he finally did, he got a shot straight into the bottom corner to make it 2-0 to go to halftime. And Murat Yakin was happy. The Swiss, co- the Swiss coach is like, okay, everything was everything went to plan in the first half. You're dominating the ball. You're creating chances. You had two goals. Like it was, it was all good. You know, it was all good. Then, um, yeah, in the s- halftime, Hungary had to do something and make a change. So they made a change in defense, but that allowed them to actually press a bit higher and increase the tempo a bit more. Because at this point, they were going down that Scotland path where it's like, yeah, you started off well, and then you just get lost for a good chunk of the game and then the other team scores goals and you have to fight you have to like claw your way back yeah um which uh scotland didn't do yesterday but in the case of switzerland like i mean in the case of hungary second half they came with energy they came with energy um the one thing about Sobozlai is Sobozlai is always is the is the key for this hungary team one more thing about Sobozlai, he was actually today his appearance makes him the youngest ever captain in um, a Euros game, which is impressive and good good on him. But yeah, you nullify Sobozlai, Hungary is more or less done, right? So the one thing that um, most teams that you see nowadays, most teams don't have a number 10. You don't just have a number 10 who everything goes through because when you just have a number 10, it makes you predictable and it makes the other team just have a game plan, take care of the game, and there's nothing you can do. So that's why you'll see teams like Man City have two number eights who can more or less do everything. They can be part of the creative beat, can, can defend as well, just to throw you something different and see how you're going to react to it. Second half, I think the coach did something quite smart. He, instead of just leaving him through the middle, they made him start going to the left a bit more. So he meant Shaloy on the wing, because Shaloy was so energetic, the number 20. Like, put him next to the wing, let them play the two, uh, they play off of each other. If you're Switzerland, you send two, it means there's going to be space somewhere else. If you send one, it's just an overload and they're going to uh, try and take advantage of it. And that's how their goal came. Because um, the ball came, actually, before the goal, Varga had a very good chance. Shaloy crossed in, then Varga just headed it wide. Shaloy was destroying people on that wing. Nutmegs, everything. Like he was number 20, he's actually like one of those people who've just really impressed me uh, today. Um, yeah, so Varga just header straight header in the middle of the d the one chance one of the few chances that they had gotten in the in the in the d um against uh switzerland headers wide but then two minutes later again the long ball from the back vaga is somewhere in the middle of the on the field but on their on the on the on their right side so he just lays it off to the midfielder midfielder kicks it straight to shaloy now on the left wing so Boz, Shaloy is attacking the defender and because he was really causing havoc, they had to play one-on-one. They had to try and send someone else to him. He just uh, sucks in defense, gives it to Sobozlai. Sobozlai with an amazing, amazing cross and assisted to Vaga who made it 2-1. And that's just a few minutes, like literally two minutes after he had just missed a very good opportunity. At this point, the crowd is rocking. Um, but also, the crowd was in it just before they got to that position, right? So we also need to give the crowd uh, some some props here because they really brought the team back, you know? Um, yeah, and then from there on, it was just a fight. Like, the, the two teams were just going at it. It was just physical. Um, Hungary finally brought on Adam. This guy is a big dude, number nine. He's just the physicality. They really caused Switzerland problems. But the way Switzerland go through this game is experience. These guys had six players in on the field who had 50 or more caps. And then someone like Xhaka was 100 and I don't know, 70 what. Okay, well, it's a lot. I don't know how many it is, but it's a lot. It's well over 100. Um, and this is the one strength Switzerland has, right? Um, if they go ahead, they can actually... Uh, they have the experience to... They, kn- they know how to close out games. And they have, I mean, again, six players with 50 caps plus. Like, that is really, really insane. Um, that is the one strength they have. The one thing that I worry for them is if they go behind, like what happens, you know? And yeah, so far, I mean, all you can wish for is a good win at the beginning of the tournament. It was not too much of a scare. You had a very good first half. You can build on that, you know? Um, you got a sub, you, you got a substitute coming off the bench and scoring. So yeah, all in all, it was, it was really good. Um, oh yeah, one more thing on Dua. Dua is the striker. He's uh, Quadwo Dua. He's of Ghanaian descent. 
it was actually his second game, you know. He actually made his debut last week. So for a young guy to come on and actually it was a bit of a surprise for him to start, but I mean, he played well for when he actually did. He kind of went quiet after about the 20 something minute, 25th minute there he was a bit quiet, but yeah. Mbolo came on, uh, managed to chip the keeper to make it secure, 3-1. And that is how Switzerland start off their campaign with a 3-1 win against Hungary. They now move to second place, just behind Germany in Group A. Uh, 